So this image here is striking, right? Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. It's an episode of Water Break today and we're going to be talking about this. It's the Steam Deck. And I'm super, super excited about it because I have been waiting for a product that actually gets me kind of excited for years. Now, I would say that when this channel first started, it was all about like PlayStation Vita, a handheld, oh, I've got one right here, a handheld console that you can play games on. But then, you know, Sony kind of gave up on it. And to be honest, it didn't last nearly as long as it could have done because after only a few years, Sony was just like, okay, we've done our best, but we really just cannot compete against the mobile space. So it was just a really difficult time for mobile games at the time. Anyway, after that, Nintendo was just like, well, we're not making a handheld only, but our main console actually is a handheld, so you can take it around with you. And let's face it, the Switch has been an overwhelming success. What you see here, though, the Steam Deck, it's not... I don't think trying to just be a better Nintendo Switch. I think what you're seeing here is a product that came that's coming out like at just the right time and because of all the stuff that has happened before it. The reason I think Steam Deck is particularly interesting is because this is obviously going to be interesting to people who love to play on their PC, right? The Steam game system, if you're not familiar with it, is a platform where you go on Windows and instead of just downloading games randomly, you, go, you download Steam and then through Steam you download all the games and it's all handled by this one app called Steam. Now, I think that obviously this works perfectly well for PC gamers and hardcore gamers, but there's a large number of people who just won't be bothered with PC gaming because one, having a laptop is just too many cables and chargers and all the peripherals you have to plug into it. Or if you have a large tower PC, it's like always stuck in the computer room or it's far away from the TV and to be to like play your PC games, you end up being kind of antisocial and kind of not hanging out with your actual family members in the living room, which is why a lot of us just end up playing with our, our mobile phones. It's just like, well, we don't actually have the games on here that we want to be playing, but at least we can sit in the living room with our families and be social. Then Steam, the company Valve that makes Steam, they came up with this system called Steam Link. Now, the problem with Steam Link is that even though it caters to these hardcore gamers who want to actually be more social and bring their you know, gaming consoles into the living room or to take it on the go and play on the train and all that, Steam Link streams from your PC to the handheld, to, to your iPad or to whatever mini PC that you've got or some other. I, I, I stream to my Mac, actual my MacBook Air. The problem with that, though, is that there's latency. Now, for a large number of games that I like to play, actually, the latency is not that bad. I'm really not that competitive. I'm not playing first-person shooter games at 144 hertz, and it doesn't matter to me like to have a super high resolution at a super low latency. For fighting games, however, I do prefer to play them with as low latency as possible because sometimes it gets quite noticeable. It's just like, okay, I can't be, I can't play this at this, this with this much lag. In addition to the fact that playing fighting games online already incurs a certain amount of lag as well. Plus, netcode, which I won't get into, but like some games have just terrible netcode, and so that makes the situation even worse. Basically, we want to just use the fastest hardware that we can, or rather the most immediate hardware with the, most, with the least amount of display lag and input lag. So I think that this product, the Steam Deck, is particularly interesting because it sits right in between hardcore gamers who won't leave their PC because the best game experience is over here, and casual gamers who like, whatever, I can't play all those games that I want to play on PC, and to be honest, I haven't even heard of most of those games on PC, I'll just buy a Nintendo Switch, and I'll just play whatever comes out on here. The problem with the Nintendo Switch, however, even though it's cheap and cheerful, I say cheap and cheerful, it's like $300, it's not that it's cheap, but it is way cheaper than it could be if Nintendo didn't subsidize the price, right? The reason you can buy like a Nintendo Switch at a super low price, or PlayStation, or an Xbox, is because they often, with these com these consoles, ever since like the PlayStation 3, they, they decided, we'll just lose money Okay, will sell these consoles at a loss. And that means more people will get them in their hands, but they're not going to just play them with no games, right? They're not going to sit on the menu th system and just like twiddle their thumbs the whole time. They're going to buy games. And a lot of those big games are 
PlayStation actual developed games and also just to be on the PlayStation store, obviously the developers and publishers have to like negotiate with Sony, right? And so basically, Sony will get money from s game sales, and they'll make more than enough money to make up for the fact that their console is being s is costing them money. They're losing money every time they sell it. So it took a company like Valve, right? And actually, there's a good video you should all check out by Low Spec Gamer, who I, I love his content, by the way. But he did a whole video talking about all sorts of devices that are like this one here, but haven't been able to really crack the market. And it's because these companies, they don't own Steam. Valve owns Steam. Nintendo owns the Nintendo Store. PlayStation owns the PlayStation Store. And all of the publishers that are partnered with them to, to sell PlayStation licensed software, right? But I say licensed software, you know what I mean? PlayStation games. But Steam actually own, or Valve actually owns Steam, and so they make money every time a game is sold on Steam. And obviously, if they make a handheld, even if they lose money, if it increases sales overall of games on Steam, then it's a win for them. And it's also, who knows, maybe it's not even about the profit. Maybe they're just like, we just really want to have this product available just to make the main product, Steam, more powerful. Maybe it in the end causes a loss overall, but it's just like the brand of Steam just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually Steam is just, you know, the place to go to buy PC games. It's the place to go to get these games on the Steam Deck. It's also the place to go to get VR games. Like the value of Steam going up is really important. And so this is one of those products which is definitely, I feel, going to do it for them. Now, the thing about it is that it does seem to work really well for that little like middle ground in between the like hardcore gamers and the and the casual gamers who are mostly on their switch and i feel that the main reason is because it's trying to tick all the boxes with all the different categories and although it's not obviously like the mega handheld that it could be. Like we look at the specs, it's like, okay, so it's got the Zen 2 architecture and the RDNA GPU system. And it's like, okay, it's not the most powerful thing out there. And we, we kind of want that. We're like, okay, if you're gonna come out with a handheld, it better blow us away and like, oh my God, I can't believe it's so powerful. But it clearly, for Valve, it's clearly more important that they reached the price point that they could compete with the Nintendo Switch at. So I believe this is an article by IGN. I'm not going to like read through the whole article for you, but it's the, 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 the title is really interesting. It's just like the price was painful, but critical, right? So you read through this article and it's just like, they were trying to figure out how they were going to price this thing. And they realized that making sure it was at a low price was critical to getting this thing to succeed. Of course, Another strategy is to make a product that's just so blisteringly fast and impressive that maybe that just hooks onto the hardcore gamers who want to pay for it as well. But if we're talking about a simpler way to make a profit, why not take advantage of all these people who got into gaming through this, the Nintendo Switch, but for $300, let's go, mm, okay, well, $300 and $350 for that new one that's coming out, the OLED. If you just pay another $50, so it's only $400 total, which people are used to paying now because they're, they're used to Oculus Quest 2 and Nintendo Switch and o Xbox Series S. It's like there's an average price that people are now like kind of willing to pay for these things. They're like, we don't mind losing a bit of money, but if you spend $400, we can sell you something a bit like this. But whoa, check out the prices on the Steam store. So this is the other thing that's really powerful about the Steam store is that this company, Valve, they run Steam, which has a Steam sale basically every day. There's always Steam sales selling stuff at like 50% off. But the games on here are often on the winter and summer sale and they're like often between 60 and 95% off. The games are just so cheap because they're selling games from, you know, three years ago, five years ago, or 10 years ago, or even you know, just games from last year. Sometimes they're 60 to 70% off. It's a really powerful store that they've got here. And if you have a Steam Deck, like I was saying, I think it will really cater to the people who are right here in the middle. And the reason is it hits the right point in terms of latency. 
We want a handheld that's not streaming video content from a PC through our Wi-Fi routers. And so it's fast and there's no, no latency. The controllers are all there. Like literally they gave us every possible controller they could think you would want. You've got analog sticks, you've got a normal D-pad, like even, even a Nintendo Switch doesn't ship with an actual D-pad. You have to go and buy like a $25 attachment from Hori, which I actually, I'm a big fan of. Obviously, I think I need to buy a new one because it's starting to get a little gummy, but you know, this is a separate extra that you have to buy for Nintendo Switch just to have this controller. This thing, the Steam Deck over here, this actually has a D-pad built in. It's got two analog sticks, which hopefully won't have a drift issue, which was a big problem for Nintendo, but not so big a problem that they couldn't sell units. And it's also got twin touchpads, and I think they've been experimenting with like the touchpad on the left. Maybe it has like a zone of direct sort of correlation from the pointer on the left side of the screen and another touchpad to control stuff on the right side of the screen. But they have done a lot of experimenting with controllers because they had their own Steam controller. So now, as a result of all this experimenting around, and they, you know, they experimented with VR controllers as well. I've actually got one over here that like you can even see like this, this, all the stuff that they work on, it always tends to, I say always tends to, it tends to make its way into their other products, but you know, they've got a touchpad on here. I think actually on the index controller, does it even have touchpads on it? I'm not sure, but like the main thing about that was your, your finger control. But for the main majority of the games on Steam that are not VR, they're controlled with analog sticks or twin analog sticks, which is important so you can play those, those twin stick those twin stick shooters or just, you know, games that have camera control on one side and movement on the other side. D-pads so that you can play those puzzle games and those fighting games and all those games that don't involve like walking around in a 3D space, but more about precise di di digital control. We've got touchpads for all the games that are usually controlled with a mouse, but obviously when you're sitting on the couch, you need a way to interact with your games that are not you know, that without the use of a mouse, because once you've got a mouse, now you need a mouse pad. And this is from the research that they did with their Steam controller by Valve. I think that, I, I, sorry, I just want to keep saying, I really do think that this is ticking all the right boxes, or at least trying to tick all the right boxes, so that everyone from every different demographic is going to be interested. They might, they might not be blown away but they're going to be interested. And the reason I think that's going to kind of work really well is because I feel it was the same situation with the Switch. When the Nintendo Switch showed up, it wasn't like, wow, this is the most powerful, amazing thing. It's definitely going to be a hit. I remember being very, very kind of worried about when the Switch came out. I was just like, okay, first of all, I, I, I'm a little concerned that it doesn't have a real D-pad, but fortunately, like it took like a year or half a year, but Hori came out with one of these was worried about the power, I was worried about the resolution, like it's not a very high resolution, All of the, most of the games are running at 720p or less, probably 5, like what is it, 560p, whatever, it's like sub 720p, but it's, it's like, it's good enough. What's really weird about the Nintendo Switch is that there were a lot of concerns about the fact that it's not really the most powerful device, it's not really the most high resolution device, it's not really got the best controllers, and over time, what we discovered was not only are the controllers not the best, but they've actually got issues, like drift issues. It's not the most powerful console, but it just gets the job done and it gets the games that it's playing, like some of these impossible ports, right? They're actually running quite well or well enough that it gets people interested to go and buy one of these consoles and play these games. And I think the same thing is going to happen with the Steam Deck. It's not the fastest processor. It's not the fastest GPU, and this is not probably the ideal control scheme. It's like maybe, okay, well, they've crammed all these controls in here, but is that really the ideal place for the D-pad, or is that really the ideal place for the like up, the X, Y, A, B buttons? And like, it, it, I think I can show you here, there's also buttons here on the back of the unit. Where are the pictures? You can check here on the back of the unit. You can also see these, <laughs> it's even got extra triggers, not just a left trigger and a right trigger, like paddle buttons, but two on both sides. So you've got an R4, R5, and an L4, R L5. It's got so much flexibility, but not because this is the ideal setup. This is not the ideal controller. You go, oh yeah, that's exactly what a controller should look like. It's like, it's gonna look kind of weird. It's gonna look kind of awkward. To be honest, it's gonna look a lot like this. This is the controller. I received this from Hori to make a video 
pre recently, actually, I put the video up like a week ago. But it's like, this is not the ideal setup for the Nintendo Switch. It's just, it's really wide. To be honest, I would prefer if the left analog stick was, oh, sorry, the right, and I would prefer if the left analog stick was down here and the D-pad was, was up here. It's, it's, it's kind of a funny shape, but it actually does the job quite well. And yeah, again, it's not perfect. It's not super high performance, but it's just like, wow, it really converts this experience into something I will do and enjoy. And that's probably where they're going with this device. It's like, well, if we can get the price point at a level that everyone will be interested, then even if it doesn't excel and become like the best at what it does, it's going to be the go-to object for everyone to buy. And I think the bigger, the bigger effect that this is going to have on Steam and PC gaming in general is PC gaming is going to now concede, not concede, I think the word I'm looking for is centralized and by Valve, the company in charge of Steam, which easily is the largest digital distribution platform for games on PC or PC based gaming, it's going to cause the whole industry around PC gaming to become centralized around this one device. No matter what happens, people are going to make sure that their games can run on this. It's not going to be aimed at this device as the main place that people play it. Obviously, these AAA games and games with mega amazing graphics or super fast reaction times required, you know, obviously you're still going to be wanting to play your FPS games on a big monitor with like, I don't know, 360 hertz refresh rates and whatever crazy stuff is out there now. But every publisher is going to be making sure that their developers make their games work on this as well. Not the Nintendo Switch, but you know what, I'm just holding it for illustrative purposes on this thing, the Steam Deck. And I think that is a good thing because that's the main thing that has been missing from PC gaming for me. I find that even though I have a PC, I end up playing console games anyway. And I think most PC gamers probably also own a console and play on it every now and then, you know, particularly when they're in the living room. Now, some of them may have really great Steam Link setups where they can play all their Steam games through their home consoles on their living room TV, oh, sorry, through their Apple TVs or whatever, like laptops that are running Steam Link. But getting controllers into that device, playing multiplayer games with people, playing the console when the PC is not switched on. Just there's so much about the console experience, which is simplified and, you know, it just works. I can't remember which company has that phrase, but the feeling of it just works is really important when you're gaming casually and slightly above casually. And I think that's what's going to be really important about this device. I think everyone knowing that it's out there, everyone realizing that, okay, it's not what we really aim our game to be. We've, we're aiming for 4K. We're aiming for 144 hertz. Even if that is the end goal for some of these companies, they're all going to be making sure that their game works on this device as well, which means that we can now use the PC gaming space in the way that we used to use consoles. So a lot of people have been pointing out this particular image, and I don't know where it is now because I've scrolled away from it. So this image here is striking, right? Because it's kind of strange for fighting gamers to be playing on such a tiny monitor. But I mean, it does happen on the Nintendo Switch now, but this is a PC. And one of the big, big topics that always comes around every six months or so in the fighting game space is why don't we run our tournaments on PC? And if we did run tournaments on PC, that would open up, there's large discussion about how that could open up the whole esports things and sponsorships. Because if it's if fighting game tournaments are always run on consoles, there's like not as much interest from manufacturers of monitors, of RAM, of gaming peripherals, of PC cases, of fans, of motherboards, of graphics cards, of cables, of setups for your desk, all the stuff that is exciting for people when they're shopping and building and making their own custom PC setups. A lot of that stuff isn't really interesting to sponsors in the fighting game space because we've locked ourselves down to always using consoles in, to in tournaments. And so 
the conversation that came up on Twitter, I can't remember, I feel like everyone was really talking about it, is could we be using devices like these instead of consoles at tournaments? And as a result of going through this, because it is like standardized hardware, it's entirely possible to standardize maybe like driver packs and things that we just send out to all the tournament organizers and say, just install this pack on your PCs and you'll be good to go for the tournament. You'll have all the drivers you need. You'll have the games set up the way that you require. We can even modify the games so that they have like, I don't know, built in score counters or all sorts of features that would automate certain processes. We can't do any of that cool stuff when these games are always running on console because consoles tend to be locked down systems. Who knows? Maybe there will become a console, there will come a console that's not as locked down. But I, up, up until this point, you're not able to really, I don't know if it's like legal or illegal, but it's always like a big hoo-ha about whether you're allowed to run custom firmwares on these devices. Just like, we should be allowed to do whatever we want with them now that we own the hardware. But technically, like when you turn it on for the first time, you agree that you promise to never modify the firmware of the device or something like that. It's, it's silly and it's, it's a long topic and a long discussion. Essentially, even though that might have like a solution somewhere down the line, if it were just run on PC, we could just escape a lot of those issues by just having full customization. Because you'd, one, you'd be able to run super old games on that, you know, consoles that are no longer supported. You could also modify stuff. You could have custom games that are not running through even the Steam store, you could actually just install games separately because it comes with Steam OS, but you can install Windows on it or Linux on it and you can just completely customize this thing. And even though the systems themselves will be super customized, the hardware will be standardized. And I think that's going to make life a lot easier when considering this transition to the PC space for tournaments. And who knows? This might just be a stopgap measure. It's just going to make things kind of convenient for a while. But who knows, after people get used to using PC-based systems and go, okay, so you don't get a blue screen of death every time you play a fighting game on a PC. Like running a PC for me, my entire life has been a, a scary prospect because it's like you never really know when you're going to have a driver conflict or a piece of software that doesn't like another piece of software. It doesn't work like a console where everything is sandbox and is in in incapable of hurting other parts of the sandbox. But this is a PC running Steam OS, which is designed to run these games in little sandboxes. And hopefully they'll have the drivers all sorted out so that this could be our stepping stone to converting fighting game tournaments over to the PC space, which I'd, I actually don't know how difficult it would be to jump straight over to PC. I, I get the feeling that we're just not ready for it yet. But then again, it could just be a case of maybe people just haven't tried and maybe that's why it's not happening. Anyway, that's all I really want to say today about the Steam Deck. Obviously, I could probably make another 15 videos in, only, in like the next week alone, I could make, probably make 15 separate videos talking about different aspects of the device and the potential of it. But I just wanted to get the conversation started because I really want to cover a lot more about the Steam Deck going forward. Now, the device actually doesn't come out until the first quarter of 2022. So I think pre-orders will get finalized sort of winter time of this year, 2021, and then 2022, that's when these devices will start to roll out. But I just wanted to point out to everyone that I think that this is a really important device. I don't think it's just going to appear and then disappear and go like, ah, it didn't really work. I think at this price, it's a large company, Valve, who is in charge of Steam and they're willing to make a loss on the cost of the hardware. They're willing to sell it and lose money every time they sell it just so that they can strengthen Steam even more as if Steam isn't strong enough already. It's already really, really strong. And actually that's a big question as well. It's just like maybe Steam is too strong. Maybe we need more power to the other dis digital distributors as well. But the thing about this that's hugely different as well to mainly things like Switch or PlayStation or Xbox is that this thing is open. Like Switch, they don't really want you running custom firmware on here. Even though I think technically you can, they really don't want you to. PlayStation is the same, Xbox is the same. Steam, they're like, they actually did it in the very first interview. They're just like, 
yeah, we're going to be losing money when we make this, but we wanted the price to be right. And yeah, you could run other stuff on it as well. <laughs> like, So they're aware that you might buy this and just not run Steam on it. You might just use it for something completely different. And they're fine with it. They are committed to this mission to just see if they can make it work. And I think it's already decided. I think with this much flexibility, with this many, this number of controllers, this type of power and this form factor and size and again it's running 720p or was 800p by standard but you know you'll be able to play most of your games at 720p on average i think it's going to be right there in that middle crossroads where everyone is just interested enough that they're going to buy one anyway and that's going to allow them the power to make another one that's even more powerful and even more successful <sighs> I'm just really excited about the Steam Deck. But now the question goes over to you. Let me know in the comments, how do you feel about the Steam Deck? Do you think it's going to come and go like a lot of these other sort of Switch style gaming mini PCs have come and gone? Or do you think it's going to stay and let this is like the way that I think kind of, for lack of a better term, a big deal. It's, it's kind of, a, I think it's kind of a big deal. Let me know what it is you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I plan to be talking plenty more about Steam Deck in the future as, as long as I can get my hands on information because again, the console doesn't come out until next year or the, the pre-orders will be finalized in December of this year. Hopefully there will be plenty to talk about on the run up to the release of this product and I'm really, really excited about it. So do subscribe check me out on Twitch. I will be streaming as always on Twitch and you can check the links below for that. And you can follow me on Twitter as well. And if you want to hang out with other people who are fans of the type of content you see here on Nihongo Gamer, there's a Discord as well. You can go in there, make friends with people who are like-minded and like to play fighting games or just talk about Japan, anime, music, what have you. Anyway, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.